RS Boyer's Heating and Air Conditioning is the exclusive sponsor of our ACC tournament coverage. Visit AugustaFreePress.com to learn more about RS Boyer's. For Augusta Free Press, I am Chris Graham, and uh, welcome to our podcast here post semifinal Saturday interviews with UVA head coach T- Tony Bennett and star players Joe Harris and Akil Mitchell after Virginia's 51 48 win over Pitt in the ACC tournament semifinals. Now, the significance of this win, and you'll hear this as the, uh, the podcast goes on, as Coach Bennett and Joe Harris and Akil Mitchell all address this, but the significance of this win, among other things, obviously gets EVA in the ACC tournament final. First ACC tournament final appearance for the Cavs in 20 years and a chance to win the Cavs' first ACC tournament championship in 38 years. So a lot on the run there. And, of course, we'll hear about the game in depth and more. Let's go to the interview session right here. Okay. Um, obviously, um, hard-fought game. It was. It was physical. Um, we went through a, a bad, well, a long scoring drought at the end until I think Joe hit that nice layup on the, the wrap. Um, but we knew that coming in, it was going to be like that from our first game with him. And it just was kind of trying to, to stand and last and, uh, and fight. And obviously they had played three games in a row, and that was our second. So hopefully our depth and, and having that, that bye was significant in that game. First question, front row. Hey, Tony, uh, Anthony has not always been automatic at the line this year, but given the way he has been playing in this tournament, were you confident when he went up for that one-on-one? Um, yes, no, the, the one that when he made both, you're saying, yeah, no, he did, because the last game, I think he was, what did he, was he five of, what was the last game, didn't he make them all at the line, or five of six, yeah, and uh, we've been shooting a ton of them, and you know, he, he had his rhythm, and um, of course, and, and at that last, we had a little, there's point five, and we're like, well, should he make it, should he miss it, and I told him to miss it for a second, and then I caught myself and said, just make it, game over, but either way, it worked out, so, uh, but those were big free throws for sure. Uh, Akil, on that late uh, layup, I guess, by Patterson, it looked yeah. like maybe you had some contact with him there. Were you surprised uh, you didn't hear a whistle? Um, yeah, a little bit. You know, I just wanted to con- contest it uh, as best as I could. I definitely didn't want to foul. Um, but, you know, they, they let, it, let it go. Second row. Hi, Tony. You've talked all year about your team taking advantage of opportunities. Can you talk about the opportunity you have in front of you tomorrow? Well, it's certainly a great opportunity. Um, you know, to advance into the, the championship game, and um, you know, this is this is what it's about. You know, we were fortunate to to win an ACC regular season championship, or I don't know if we call it that in this league, but um, but we we won that, and this is a huge opportunity, it's such a prestigious event, and um, to to play for that uh, again, preparation for the NCAA tournament, all those things are huge, and and it's been a while. I think there's only one, right? And you ask our writers that we won. And I get reminded of that quite a bit, so it's a chance to, to add a second one to it. Back of the room. Tony David Teal from the Daily Press. You had given the two fouls on Pitt's last possession. Right. Did, did you consider fouling again since you were up three? And then what about Justin's defense to, yeah. to block the Made shot? Made a big block. No, we, we didn't. Um, did you watch the Maryland game? <laughs> so um, it, it's just the studies have been done on that. Um, you know, it's it's a. It, I just felt comfortable making them hit a tough contested shot. That's kind of what we try to build our defense on. That doesn't mean I wouldn't ever consider doing it, but I just felt with them not having any timeouts um, and not being set, they'd have to shoot or make a real tough shot. And yeah, you just you saw Justin unfold on that shot, and um, that was obviously a, a great play. We made some big defensive plays where they got in the lane on us defensively, and whether it was blocks or just big plays that we had to come up with. And you need to do that. You need to make plays on offense. You need to make plays defensively when it's one of those kinds of games. Third row. Uh, For the players, uh, it seemed like each of the blocks that you and your teammates had seemed to kill Pitt's momentum. Did it feel that way on the floor? Akil? Uh, I mean, I I felt like every every possession we we wanted to try to kill the momentum. Um, You know, whether if it was a a turnover or uh, just solid defense, that was our our mindset the whole game. So, um, you know, the blocks just helped with uh, with the – I guess we try to stay in position the whole game. Jeff? Oh, um, yeah, I just go off what Akil said. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess, like, you know, those plays really do help. Uh, you know, the blocks are huge momentum boosts. Uh, the fans really get into it, and they seem to give you a surge there a little bit. So I guess from that, 
uh, perspective of the blocks uh, do you help the moment, momentum? Joe doesn't block a lot of shots. So yeah, I don't block any right shots. Yeah, I answer that question. <laughs> Uh, this is for the players. Coach talked about a little bit with Justin's key block at the end of the game. What was going through your mind at that point, and given how well you've played defense throughout the year and today, how confident were you guys on that last possession that you could make a stop? Um, I would say, uh, you know, I was very confident in our ability to get a stop there at the end. Uh, you know, we pride ourselves in getting stops and being a defensive-minded team. So when the last possession comes down to getting a stop, uh, I would say that, you know, man for man on our team, we would feel very confidently that we could, we'd be able to do that. Back left. Yeah, Kevin Fitzgerald, uh, W8ER Radio. For uh, Joe and Akil, you know, just watching Justin's block, you know, how much do you guys and, you know, your team, your fan base feed off his energy and, you know, his emotion while you guys are out there? Yeah, uh, it's, it's definitely necessary to have a guy like that um, just because he gives us so much energy. And uh, if anybody's dead or if anybody's, you know, kind of flat-footed, he, he definitely gets us going. And, Gets on your nerves every once in a while, but it's necessary. <laughs> Definitely necessary. Front row. Doug Gaddy from the run-up times. Tony, what went into the decision for your dad to come to the tournament? <laughs> we know he's not famous for attending your games. No. Well, first he said, if you win your first game, I'll come to the second game in the tournament. But And I said, okay. And I said, well, are you going to watch our first game? He said, yeah. So I called him after the... Uh, the Florida State game, I said, did you watch? He said, no. And I said, okay. I said, are you coming then because we won? He said, no. <laughs> so he said, if you make it to the championship, I'll come. So um, I said, fine. You know, he said, but I'm coming to the NCAA tournament. Well, he showed up at, I don't know, 9 o'clock this morning and um, just said he was coming. And, and I, I laughed because he delivered a, a message. He, he said, this is going to be a, he called it a, a blue-collar knuckle buster. That was his term. And then we, we talked about that before the game, and it truly was in terms of how physical is a blue-collar game, kind of put your hard head on, but we, the blue-collar knuckle buster was the thing he said. And I'm glad he was there. He's, uh, you know, obviously he's had a huge influence on me. And he has a good relationship with these guys, especially Joe Nikhil, who came in. So I'm glad he got to see it. You know, I don't, I don't know if he'll be here tomorrow or not. This is 50-50. <laughs> Back to the room. Coach David Glenn from the David Glenn Show at ACCSports.com. You mentioned earlier that in your time at UVA, you're going to be asked about 1976. I mean, enough times over 60 years with this, that being the ACC title for the Cavaliers. I mean, have you become like an unofficial authority on Wally Walker and those guys, <laughs> given all of those mentions to you over the years? Yeah, that, that's, uh, it's been a while. So it's good that we're having this conversation right now. And obviously what they did was special and because how special the ACC tournament is. But um, it, it'd be great to obviously put another banner or have that to share with them. He said, actually, I got a text before he came, and he said, we want some company. That's what Wally sent me a text. We want some company um, being that only group. Left aisle. Yes, uh, uh, for uh, Joe, uh, Kip Coons for the Dominant All News and Observer. Joe, the uh, basket you scored at the end on that, when you made the cut that Coach Bennett was talking about, would you walk us through that play? What did you read on that? What did you see shaping up? Um, it's just our sides motion, um, and I got a flare screen. I think it was from you. Was it from you? No, I think it was Anthony. Anthony came up, set his screen up to the high post, and I just wrapped it. That's just the tradition. That's what you do. You just wrap it to the to the block, and then if it's open, not if it's not open, you come back off it on the rescreen. And I happened to be open coming off of the flare, and uh, London made a great pass, and I just was quick to get it to the glass. To our right. Beth Bernstein, New York Times. Is it for the players? Is it fun? To play a, a blue collar knuckle bus, is, is there a joy in that? And, and coaches, is it hard to attract players to want to play that? I think it's fun. I, I mean, I love it. We're winning, and um, you know, it's 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 fun to, to impose your will and to uh, to really get after it, especially against a team like Pitt that's so tough. And um, you know, in four years, I guess we you could say we've been bred to to enjoy those games and to really enjoy playing that that real knuckle bus and style of defense. So um, I, I enjoy it, and I know the rest of my guys do too. Yeah, I mean, um, it just you're not going to break Pitt down quick, and hopefully you're not going to break us down. So our last game was like this, and it's just hard to get a good look. And um, it's, um, it's our best way to be successful. We're having a chance to, to play for a championship, and that's significant, and that's the beauty of college basketball. There's so many ways to do it, and I think this team has some versatility, but we do have some things that we hang our hat on, and that is the soundness and the toughness and getting good shots, and we do it collectively and um, the right guys want to play that way, and, and it's, it's fun. And it's fun to win. Pick three more. First one in front of me. Frank Maloney, WRVA, WRNL, who's talking? 
um, Joe and Akil, talk about the journey that you've had uh, starting out at UVA, rebuilding the program and the synergy you've developed on the court and how it's all sort of come together here this weekend. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Well, I would say that, uh, you know, when we first came in, um, in Coach Bennett's first recruiting class to uh, Virginia, he said, you know, we might have to learn to lose together before we can win together, and, you know, it wasn't going to be easy, and we were going through some tough times, but, you know, that he believed in us, and he believed that we could have an opportunity to really change this thing around. That's the main reason why, you know, Keel and I and our class decided that we wanted to, to, to come here, and, uh, you know, the our first year... It was tough. We experienced some uh, bumps along the way, but I think, you know, over time we gradually have just, uh, you know, gotten used to what Coach wants out of us, his philosophy, mindset, and it's kind of been ingrained in us. And like Akil was saying earlier when we were talking about a knuckle buster type, uh, type game and how we really enjoy that, I mean, that's genuine. We actually do. We've been, you know, kind of bred. That's the way that we think. We are a defensive-minded team, and that's how we believe we're going to win games, and that's what we've come to believe. Um, over time, and I think you know that's why we've had success and why we've gained success um, over the past couple of years. Tony, uh, I think there was a point in the second half when the team was shooting better than 50% from the floor. Then you had the six-minute stretch without any points. Why did the offense bog down? Did Pitt's defense just pick up? They did. I think we got fatigued and we got stagnant, and um, you know it came out us trying to make some plays, and we just. Um, we got a few good looks in that, but we were pretty stagnant, and, you know, I probably could have maybe given them some better sets to get them moving a little more, but um, there were some tired guys out there, and I didn't think we, we ran our offense as hard, or when we had a set, we just kind of got uh, thwarted by Pitts D. They really were, I mean, they they got physical. It was obviously they weren't going to give you anything easy, and, and everybody knew it was kind of hanging on a possession. Our guys knew that in our timeouts. You're saying, one more stop. Everything you got, leave it out on the floor. They were doing the same thing. And, um, you know, when, when the defense has that mindset, it's just hard to score. But, but this, I think we were very stagnant in that stretch, and that maybe hurt us a little bit. Last question. Tony, did you, have you had a conversation with Terry Holland since you've been down here? So, I've been here? No, uh-uh. Um, but he's, he's been great, like, throughout the year. He came... Uh, talked to our team. I mentioned that before. He and Coach Carlisle did, and then uh, came to our shoot around before we played Duke. Sends a, an encouraging text or email. He's been wonderful, and obviously he's such a legend um, as a coach and what he did for Virginia basketball. So hopefully um, we can try to get this done tomorrow and, and make those guys proud. Thank you. You heard there from Coach Tony Bennett and Joe Harris. Akil Mitchell, two seniors who have been with this program really from Tony Bennett's beginning. They were among the first recruits that uh, he brought to Charlottesville. He told, as, as Joe Harris talked there, he told the guys that, uh, well, they'll have to learn how to lose first before they can learn how to win. And uh, a couple of rough years at the start of the Tony Bennett era, but now the Cavs poised, at least playing on Sunday in the ACC tournament. Let's not, let's not give anything away here, but uh, the Cavs certainly poised to, to uh, you know, have a chance to bring home that championship, maybe make a run in the NCAA tournament this year. A lot on the line uh, Sunday and the next few days, next few weeks for Virginia basketball. For Augusta Free Press, I'm Chris Graham. Thank you for listening. Ask RS Boyers Heating and Air Conditioning about the cool cash rebate for cash back on qualifying products. Visit AugustaFreePress.com to learn more about R.S. Boyers.